Hi guys, my name is Jane and welcome to our Bud Talk series where we're going to explore all aspects of cannabis. Today I'm here with Elias Theodora and he's the first professional athlete to get the exemption on medical cannabis. So tell us a little bit about how your journey began. Yes, I've been a professional mixed martial artist for nine years. And in that process, um, because of the you know, detriment in regards to what I do to my body physically, um, I developed a, a condition called bilateral neuropathy that was um, diagnosed and prescribed by my doctor um, that cannabis would be the best alternative uh, medicine um, for me, both as a patient and athlete. So when did you first realize that cannabis was actually a remedy to you over the other possibly prescription medicines that the doctor was prescribing to you? As with many people, um, it's the, um, you know, coming interactions with other individuals that use cannabis that you realize that it is an alternative. Um, for me, it was a, a former coach who's been a patient for over a decade. Um, and he, you know, in many ways was a mentor and also understanding his story and his needs as a patient and seeing that some of them fit in regards to my own personal needs as my um, condition started to be getting worse. Uh, that's when I decided to um, discuss with my doctor if cannabis was right for me. And we decided that it was through the trial and error of all the other alternatives. Uh, what was the hardest part on fighting that stigma? Well, the stigma itself, and that comes from uh, the fact that cannabis is still labeled a uh, schedule one drug in places like the US. Uh, so there and other places uh, a part of the governing bodies in regards to sports in general, they still look at cannabis as a performance enhancing drug. And that was one of the obstacles that I had um, applying for a therapeutic use exemption when I was with a US uh, organization and competing as an athlete, um, which was a little bit of an uphill battle, but no longer with that American um, uh, organization, I was able to apply for a therapeutic use exemption via the British Columbia Athletic Commission. And I was approved based on the um, argument that cannabis is my fundamental right uh, to medicate uh, as prescribed by my doctor. That was my first win in the um, aspect of getting cannabis recognized as a medicine. And it transcends beyond me because uh, now other athletes can look to see if cannabis is best for them and potentially no longer having to be forced to take first line medicines like opioids and painkillers uh, with all the, you know, the additional side effects that those include. So uh, now that you've kind of paved the way uh, regarding the, the use of cannabis in the sports world, do you find other athletes are kind of maybe looking at that avenue now? I think, you know, it's kind of been going that way in the last little bit. Um, you know, I am one of the many people that have been fighting for not only myself, but others. Uh, and, you know, my case specifically is a um, win in the aspect of regulation uh, under medical cannabis, um, because where my jurisdiction that I was approved was through the governing body of British Columbia. That's the first time a government, um, because they mandate uh, and they regulate um, competition in both boxing and MMA. So because of that, and because of the precedent that I set, this congruently could be accepted by all uh, athletic commissions moving forward um, in North America. So again, today it's BC, but tomorrow it could be um, you know, California, it could be uh, New York, because of the fact that they, they work together and they validate rulings in different jurisdictions for um, you know, uh, congruency in regards to uh, competition. And how do, you, how do you consume it, the THC or CBD? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I vape like a professional. Uh, so uh, especially both as a athlete and also an advocate, I try to um, represent my use of cannabis in the healthiest way possible. So I tend not to um, smoke it, uh, rather uh, what's called vaporize it, and also um, use tinctures as well throughout my day. Um, it usually starts with a tincture in the morning, a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, and then depending on how my body feels, I will uh, vaporize uh, a couple of hours before uh, competition, um, usually um, you know, mixing it in with stretching, being better in tune with my body uh, and my um, condition and my injuries. And then after my first hard training session, I'll then uh, uh, vaporize again, uh, depending on how my day moves forward, uh, vaporize again after the next training session, and then usually uh, finish off with um, uh, some type of tincture as well to help me with my sleep.
Oh, cool. So, so what are your future plans regarding uh, cannabis and MMA fighting? Yeah, so uh, the game plan is to validate my therapeutic use exemption in British Columbia. The date isn't official yet, but um, we're, we're coming closer to it. Obviously, as with everyone, uh, COVID kind of uh, put uh, a, kind of put a hold on everybody's, everyone's game that. plan for 2020. Um, but luckily, as some sense of normalcy is returning, uh, that would mean uh, back to work and back in the office in the cage. So I'm definitely looking to fight two more times this year and, uh, you know, win in the cage and out as the first medical cannabis athlete. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing. It was really nice talking to you. Uh, very interesting. And thank you guys for tuning in. Catch you next time.